Hi everyone, welcome to this six part series on a complete basic solution of Rubik's Cube. Now if you've got a messed up cube laying around somewhere, perhaps tucked away in a desk drawer or hiding in a toy box, go and grab it and follow along and by the end of the series you'll have this thing solved. If you're watching this video directly in YouTube, then have a look at the description below the video. There's a link there that takes you back to the website I created which has this video embedded in it along with all the other five videos for the five steps in solving this cube that we will use and some descriptions and images of the move sequences around those videos so some good resources to have. So I'll assume that you've clicked the link and now you're watching this video through that website. You'll, the first thing you'll notice is that if you scroll down on that site you'll see the five other videos there labeled step one through step five so each of those videos is devoted to one step that we will learn in solving this cube. Now this is going to be a basic solution and by basic I mean it's a solution that's certainly good for any beginner to learn. In fact I'd recommend any beginner learn a solution like this. But I think some of you more advanced solvers will also see some things, some nuggets maybe that might be interesting in the final layer. So in videos four and five of the solve. So if you're a more advanced user and you just want to see the kinds of things I use to solve that final layer then have a look at videos four and five. Now by a basic solution I also mean that you're not going to win any speed solving competitions with this. Uh, the, you know, if you practice enough with this, you'll probably be able to get a solve in about two, two and a half minutes, which isn't too bad. Um, but the nice thing is, is that uh, I like to argue that it requires no memorization. Now you may look at some of the things we do in the final layer and think, well, I, I do need to memorize some of that stuff. Well, maybe at first sight you might have to memorize a little bit before you get familiar to it. But I'm hoping that you'll go for understanding those move sequences and by that I mean every twist that I use in those move sequences has a purpose and I hope you're going to see the purpose and once you see the purpose I hope you'll be able to then modify them and make them all your own and once you do that then you'll see that there is really very little pretty much no memorization required in solving the cube but it might take a little bit to get there. Okay so in this video I just want to go over a brief overview of the anatomy of the cube and the overview of the five step solution that we will be using and then it's not until the next video, step one, where we start to get into solving the actual cube. So here's a little bit of anatomy and this means we're just going to name some of these pieces and get familiar with the structure of the cube so that when I use these names in later videos you know what I'm talking about. So the first thing to do is realize that you can take this thing apart and that is turn one of the faces 45 degrees, jam a thumb under the edge before you pop it out though, make a note of what color is on top and what color is on the side, blue on the top, white on the side, because when I pop it out there are two possible ways to stick it back in. And one of those ways, if I put it in upside down, it'll result in a cube that can't be solved. So once I popped it out, blue's on top so I know which way I'm going to put it back in so that it results in a cube that I can eventually solve, which I want to because this is what I'm going to use to solve in this, in this video series. Once I pop that piece out, all the other pieces, these corner pieces and whatnot, can all fall apart and you'll end up with a big jumbled mess on your desk. So let's have a look at what the pieces are that come out. The first obvious piece is this one with all six center pieces attached to it. This is the central core structure. This is what holds the entire cube together. You can see this is the center piece that is stuck to that central core. When you rotate a face, you're really rotating that center piece. One observation to make from this is that these center pieces then don't move in relation to each other. There's no way to switch the white center piece with the green one you know, I can't move that centerpiece there and that one there while leaving everything else in the same location. They're attached to each other. I can only move the whole structure as a whole. And that means that pieces that are opposite each other are always opposite each other. So the green is always opposite the blue, the yellow is always opposite the white, and the red is always opposite the orange. Now that's the standard coloring of the cube. Your coloring that you ha may have may be different. You may have different colors. So just make a note of what your coloring scheme is because that's kind of helpful when you're starting to figure out where to put pieces as you're solving the puzzle. So what about the pieces? Well, out of this fell two varieties of pieces. One of the pieces has only two colored stickers on it. This is 
what we call an edge piece. And the other kind of piece has three colored stickers on it. And this is what we call a corner piece. So looking at the puzzle assembled, the edge piece is this one that sits between two corner pieces. Now when you're solving the puzzle, the goal is to take any piece that you locate and try to move it to its final location, its permanent home in the solved state. So what's the permanent home of this red yellow piece? Well this red yellow edge piece has to live between the red face and the yellow face. So you can see there's a little notch here on the back of it that slides right in between those two center pieces and that's ultimately where we want to send that edge piece when we're solving the cube. So you'll hear me say things a lot of times like, where's the red yellow edge piece? And we'll look for it and try to find it somewhere and then we want to send it here to solve the cube. Corner pieces, also the same thing. I'm going to look at this corner piece. It's the blue, yellow, red corner piece. It's got to live in the corner that touches the blue, yellow, and red center pieces. So this is the corner it's got to live in, right up there. So that's ultimately where I want to send it. So you'll hear me to re refer to edge pieces and corner pieces by the colors that make them up. And we'll say, well, it has to go here. And how do I know where it has to go? I'm really looking at the center pieces and using those to tell me where the piece is located. So if I look at this next piece here, this is a blue red edge piece. Where does it have to go? Well, it's got to eventually end up touching the blue and the red center pieces. So that's its final location. Right, so that's the anatomy of the cube. What is our five-step process? Well, our five-step process for solving the cube is going to be as follows. We're going to use what's known as the layer method. And the layer method says, well, maybe I'll look at this one first. It says, pick a color, any color you want um, as your first layer you're going to solve. I always like to pick blue. I just have an easier time spotting the blue pieces than the other colors on the cube, uh, especially when they're all messed up. You can pick whatever color you want. Uh, I think it's uh, common for a lot of people to pick white. People can see the white better than most colors. So whatever color you want to solve first, go ahead, pick that color and hold that center piece up. That's going to be our up layer for the first few steps in solving the cube. Now, what I want to do is I want to fill in the pieces around it. So my steps are, step one is to fill in the cross pieces. So put the edge pieces in the place around that one. And so this is the result of what happens after step one, is we will fill in a cross. Now it's really important to note that it's not just any cross. I want the piece that appears here between the blue and the red centers to be the blue red edge piece. So it's not just a cross on the top, it's a deep cross, one that extends through the middle layer. Over here I want the piece, the edge piece that appears here to be the blue yellow one. So it's that deep cross that extends through the middle layer. And you can see that extends as well all the way around. So we've made a cross which extends through the middle layer. That's step one. Step two is then to fill in the corner pieces. So let's just have a look. I want to fill in that corner piece. It's got to be the blue, red, white corner piece. So there'll be a red sticker there, a white sticker there, and a blue one on top. So you'll see that these colors all match on the side. The whole top will be blue. This top layer of colors on the sides will all be the same color depending on what side you look at, and they'll match the center piece. So what we get is a bunch of little T's on the side, solid color on the top and little T's on the side. So we can refer to this as making T's. So we will end up with a cube that looks like this, blue on the top and little T's on the sides. So again, the three across the top and the center piece makes the T. So that's step two. Step three is then to go ahead and work on the middle layer and fill in the four edge cubies in the middle layer. So this is where things start to get tricky because we've already got one layer completely done and we need to now 
put stuff in the middle layer. That will involve temporarily disturbing the top layer, but restoring it as quickly as we can. And that's where we're going to start to learn some move sequences that allows us to move pieces into those middle edge spots without disturbing the top. So at the end of that step, it'll look like this, where the first two layers are done. At this stage, we'll then flip the puzzle over and we'll go to work on the last layer. And how we'll solve the last layer is we'll work on the corners first. We'll solve all four corners. And then the last step is to solve all four edges. So this was step three getting to this stage here. Top two layers done. Step four would be to solve the corners. So you can see the corners now are all solved. How do we know they're solved? Well, we look green matches green, red matches the center color red, yellow matches yellow, so that corner piece is in the right spot. All four corners are done. Step number five is finishing off the edge pieces, and voila, we've solved our cube. All right, so those are the five steps, and so let's get to them. The next video, we're going to go with step one, making the cross.